Yeah, but there's ways in there's ways around pivoting without having to pivot pivot. So your content strategy isn't working. That doesn't mean to give up on content. It just means change your strategy. So don't just go, oh well, blogs and social posting doesn't work. Well, no, it won't if you just stop it completely and forget about it and go, right, well, I'm not going to do that anymore because I did it for three weeks and didn't do anything. Well, you need to build up consistency yeah. and you need to build up trust. I would, I would, so let's take content marketing out and strategy as a, as a good example here. Build a plan, define your goals, define your activities and hold yourself accountable for doing them the same way that if you were in a bigger company, you'd be the marketing executive, the marketing manager, the marketing apprentice, and you'd have a boss holding you accountable for it, but you're now the boss, but you're also now the marketing person. So you need to hold yourself accountable for doing those things. And then you need to measure the results of those things, not tomorrow, not next month, but in three months time to see what impact those things actually had. And if you start to see improvements or because of the things you did three months ago, that's when you know things were working, not, oh, it didn't work immediately. So I'm going to do something else. So it's, yes, there is a, there is a need for change and a need for pivoting, but it's not pivoting out of what you're doing. It's pivoting within what you're doing to something different to find the part that works because every there are very few parts of marketing that won't work for almost every business. It's just how you implement those things. It's also quite frustrating working with lagging measurements where you have to, you know, trial it for three months before you can decide whether you've had any form of success or not. Um, I, and, and I think that, I think that's probably only going to get worse as, as we move forward as a, as a race, right? Like if i but we commented as I, as I opened the podcast, I looked down at my phone and I had 43 notifications. I'd only not looked at my phone for an hour, 43 notifications. And of course, you know, we're living in the age where, yeah, we're, 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 we're trained for, um, endorphins and adrenaline rush in the, in the now you've got, to phone, you've got to answer the notifications yeah. for a result now. And this is one area of life where we just have to accept that we need to be patient with it to treat it with respect and dignity, I guess. I don't think anybody's ever said that about market before, but it's, it's an element of that, right? Like it's, it's oh, I know, to then to, to, to change aspects a little bit, um, you've obviously worked with a lot of different clients across a lot of different industries, um, lots of different size businesses. Is there anything that you're seeing trending right now that seems to be working more or less across the board that was working well in some regard for pretty much everyone that maybe wasn't in the not too distant past? It's a tricky one because actually there are, are some things that work across most industries, but then there's certain things that just don't work in others. So anywhere where there's a security element, um, so cyber security, for instance, um, it's much harder to sell. And a much harder thing to market when you try to do it through sort of cold outreach. In fact, it's, it's not impossible to do it through cold outreach um, because it literally goes against grain for everything that it stands for. Uh, so that then comes back to how else to how else do you do it? Well, the answer there is to start looking at other activities and not just go with the flow with everybody 